the ABC regrets to announce that unfortunately tonight's episode of Matters Hell will be broadcast as usual. <sighs> okay, we'll just do it again, all right? Um, what the bloody hell's going on here, you tricky boy? What the bloody hell's going on here, you tricky boy? Yeah, what do you reckon? <laughs> Listen to this. Okay, Francis, you remember what we practiced? <laughs> Hi, guys, what's going on? Yes, very good, Francis! <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah, that was really shit. Now prepare to be blown away. Touch. <laughs> See, just like that. I come out from Sydney after negotiating with Ida for new shows for myself. What do I find? You ungrateful bastards training to be stunt doubles for Auntie Donna. <laughs> stunt doubles. The idea. You look nothing alike. Now you lot get back to your dressing rooms and change for the next sketch. Go on. Sorry, Sorry. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, now I uh, I know what you're thinking. Sean, is it too soon to make jokes about it? <laughs> There's going to be an enormous void in our lives. Now is not the time, and you're right, it is too soon. If we're going to do material about me finishing up on Matters Hell, we should wait until my <laughs> final episode next week. And can I just say that, uh, unlike uh, a lot of other long-running franchises, I don't have a succession plan. There isn't, there isn't a Charles <laughs> waiting in the wings who can take over my duties. Well, well there is, but he's got his own show. <laughs> Meanwhile, nothing's happening in the news at the moment. Parliament's taken a two-week break and uh, all the big wheels in Canberra are off to the mother country. The Prime Minister and the Governor-General are the first out of here. On the same flight. <laughs> I mean, sure, they look friendly, but this photo was taken before the Albanese government scrapped the funding for the David Hurley-backed Leadership <laughs> Foundation last week. Man, I would like to be a fly on the wall during that trip. <laughs> and uh, if they're going over on Qantas, uh, I'm sure the cabin would be swarming with them. <laughs> In fact, we're joined now by the mad as hell fly. Fly, um, uh, you will be accompanying His Excellency and the PM? How could I not, Sean? Now, now, uh, what's, what's your view of uh, this foundation? It had uh, never run a leadership program, had no website nor staff yet, and as we know, was still granted $18 million in the Morrison government's budget back in March. Oh, I think that was fair enough, Sean, when you have no experience of delivering a program, no way of making anyone aware of a program, and no way of delivering a program. You need every cent you can get to make it work. And, uh, and, you, and you had no problem with it? No, but then again, I am attracted to bullshit. <laughs> I, um, I, I imagine His, uh, His Excellency would have been uh, disappointed that Albo put the kibosh on it, given that he supported the Foundation and, in fact, lobbied former Prime Minister Scott Morrison several times uh, before the funding was, was awarded. Oh, yes, and it's uh, really no surprise that this idea was given the thumbs up by Scobo, uh, probably literally, because, as we know, Scott was very big on leadership. In fact, at the time, he was doing a lot more leading than any of us knew. Um, well, it was just, uh, it was just him and the Governor-General, wasn't it? I'll leave that for the independent inquiry to determine, Sean. I'm sure Scobo will give plenty of evidence. And, uh, and uh, you'll be there to hear it? I'll be there laying my eggs in it, Sean. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Fly, for your insights. Thanks very much, Sean. I must away. Well, just as there have been unseemly calls for the Governor-General to uh, resign after his role in the multiple Morrison ministry scandal, there have been unseemly calls for Australia to become a republic by Adam Bant. Either way, David Hurley is out of a job. And with no new leaders' foundation, how do we find our new president? The scrapping of the program comes about as a result of Treasurer Jim Chalmers re-examining the Coalition's March budget as part of a government audit of rorts and waste. But if we get rid of rorts and waste and pork-barrelling former CFO of the former PMO, Joe Millibert, how do governments bribe us to vote for them if we're living in safe and marginal seats? Sean, if Labor are going to spend their time in office raking over the past, then they should do it like they're in a zen garden. I mean, we had a perfectly balanced and harmonious system of pork-barrelling worked out where we promised shitloads of 
of taxpayer money before an election or after a bushfire or flood or whatever, but they've never actually paid any of it. I mean, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And uh, when you say ain't broke, you're obviously not referring to our economy. If Albert was serious about our trillion dollar government debt, he'd give those stage three tax cuts the arse. I mean, <laughs> we thought them up and even we think they're stupid. <laughs> Albo's very serious, though, isn't he? He's vowed to cut $750 million from your pork and rort program. Yes, well, I suppose Albo knows what he's talking about when it comes to pork and rorts, having done pretty much exactly the same thing back in 2009 when he was in charge of an $800 million regional and local community infrastructure program, which the Auditor General found was used to funnel money into Labor seats. Well, exactly. We, we all get the benefit from that experience. Uh, we didn't. Apparently, eligibility and compliance checking procedures were abandoned when Albo himself removed two projects in two Liberal-held seats against departmental advice. Yeah, well, you know, at least he had the decency at the time not to be so naked about his lack of transparency. <laughs> What's uh, the solution to rorting and pork barrelling now? Perhaps it's not as simple as taking the money away. Perhaps it would be a bit like trying to solve gun violence by banning bullets. Yes, no one gets shot, but people could still club each other to death with the butts of their <laughs> rifles. It strikes me, Professor Ian Orbspider, who holds not only the chair in political science at Box Hill TAFE, but also the Ottoman, <laughs> that uh, another way to solve these problems might be for, uh, for half of us uh, in each electorate to vote for one side and the other half to vote for the other, thereby rendering all seats marginal and ensuring fair and equal distribution of pork come election time. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to skin a cat, Sean. Uh, another way is to make sure it's Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> or, or, or in the case of pork barrelling, uh, Schrodinger's pig. <laughs> by, by which I mean, leave everything as it is, but just be very, very careful so that when they roll out their barrels, we can't know whether there's pork in there or not. The pork will have to be simultaneously in the barrel and not in the barrel at the same time. Yes, but how can, how can that be? Oh, well, uh, let's assume that this uh, radioactive shoebox is a pork barrel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, this cat is a pig. All right. Now, I put the pork into the barrel, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't tell you any of this. Mm. Now, Sean. Yes? What's in the box? Uh, I have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever it is will be determined uh, later by the Electoral Commission, long after the winning party has deceived everybody and is well on their way to either racking up more debt or racking up more debt, uh, depending on who gets in. All right. Well, heritage character from <laughs> Madison's Golden Age... Professor Ian Orbspider, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Sean. Yes, excuse me, sorry. Uh, yes. uh, can I plug uh, my new book, uh, 1002 Things I've Told You Previously, with one extra item to make it seem like a new book and not get me into trouble with the Trade Practices Act because of false and misleading advertising? No, I'm afraid we don't have any time. Yeah. Uh, now, normally at this juncture, uh, if, you, if you watch the show, you would know that the Professor will be struck by lightning and reduced to a skeleton. But because this is his last appearance on the show, we thought, uh, we thought uh, we'd warn him ahead of time, let him escape before that happens. Is that a good idea? Would you like to see that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes! OK, quick, quick, <laughs> Professor, run like the wind! Thank you, Professor Sean! <laughs> good. Yeah, can we just cut to the corridor for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Very much as I expected. But it's not as if everything the LNP did with money during its almost 10 years in office was improper. There were other things too. Experts have flagged concerns over a class of Australian visa that's operated for 10 years with zero rejections. Mm. Mind you, that did involve money. The significant investor visa scheme which requires a minimum investment of $5 million. Joe Miller, could, as the Townsville Bulletin states, corrupt officials have used these visas to enter Australia? Well, Sean, it's like when your friends at school ask you if you'd lick a dog turd. You know, the answer is, of course, no. But then they start naming increasing amounts of money and, inevitably, they eventually reach 50 bucks and it doesn't seem such a bad idea. <laughs> But this, this visa grants an automatic right to permanent residency, doesn't well, it? Sean, just think of this visa as a skilled migrant visa. Skilled? Skill? What skill? Holders aren't even required to speak or even learn to speak English. Well, the skill is they have the ability to give us $5 million. I mean, not everyone can do that, and frankly, it's in pretty high demand at the moment. You want to pick apart a government policy, I'd have a go at Labor's increase to the age pension of $20 a week. I mean, by doing that, you're just encouraging people to get old. I mean, slash the age pension and I guarantee you'll have fewer old people. Well, thank you very much, Dre Miller. And, Dre Miller, of course, it's your last appearance on the show, sir. So... <laughs> and uh, it's not just old people who are feeling the pinch. After five interest rate rises in five months, how are any of us supposed to make ends meet? Over Zoom? <laughs> 
the reality is that many Australians' ends won't be meeting at all. They'll just be flapping around in the breeze. A breeze that, ironically, could have provided us free power if the Coalition had pork-barreled us with wind turbines <laughs> instead of toilets and ovals. In fact, never mind ends meeting, some people won't even be able to afford ends at all. They'll be endless, like the Reserve Bank's interest rate hikes. And even more alarmingly, economist Chris Richardson from Deloitte's reckons... If uh, the government tries to use the, uh, the budget next month, uh, to ease family finances, the Reserve Bank will just raise interest rates harder. Great! So every time the government pays for our TAFE places or cuts the cost of our medicines, those psychopaths at the RBA are going <laughs> to jack up interest rates. If you're watching, Albo, my plea to you is this. Stop helping us. It's not helping. <laughs> Meanwhile, Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe last week entertained, or more accurately, gave a speech to the Annika <laughs> Foundation in which he spoke in detail about inflation. High inflation is a scourge. Or if you work at Sky News... He talked in detail about inflation being a scourge on Australia's economy. <laughs> And yes, he acknowledged that people will be under substantial financial stress for some time yet, but added that the important thing was... The economy is so much better. And as for the bank's massive underestimation of inflation, which has led to their crippling series of interest rate hikes... Forecast misses of this scale should lead to soul-searching by forecasters, and I can tell you it's leading to soul-searching at the RBA. Yeah, well, good luck finding anyone with a soul there. <laughs> Feldman, Feldman oops from the Reserve Bank after last week's rate rise. Some MPs are calling for Philip Lowe's head, which would certainly be an improvement for many of them. Sean, as regards the calls for him to go, Philip has been very clear. I can assure you I have no plans to resign. Mm. Mm. All right, so if history's any guy, I mean, he's expecting to resign five times in the next five months. It would depend on a variety of market factors, but yes. But the only tool you seem to have to get the inflation rate down is putting interest rates up. Now, confidence in the Reserve Bank is, is way down. How do you get that back up? By increasing interest rates. <laughs> Surely that's going to undermine confidence even further. What will? We're raising interest rates. No, I don't expect interest rates to rise. <laughs> you just said you were going to raise them again. Circumstances change, Sean. Sure, <laughs> what's appropriate at one time may not be at another time. OK, so no more interest rate rises in the short term? No, no, we'll lift interest rates again, most probably next month. This is, this is a fast-moving economy. Dr Lowe said that this latest increase will help bring inflation back to target and create a more sustainable balance of demand and supply in the Australian economy. How exactly does that reset supply, demand and balance? Well, our hope is that demand will drop as more and more people slip into poverty. <laughs> This is, this is pretty brutal, isn't it? Because we've got, we got petrol going up by 25 cents a litre at the end of the month. Yes, yes, that is a government decision, though. The Reserve Bank can't take any credit for that, I'm afraid. <laughs> so when Philip Lowe talks about a more sustainable balance, more sustainable for whom? The economy. <laughs> yeah, but who's the economy for? I don't understand the question. <laughs> well, who is the economy for? Why does it exist? For what purpose do its wheels turn? Excuse me, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> well, a million dollars would certainly go some way to easing cost of living pressures, wouldn't it? Here's Ulna. Good evening. And tonight, one lucky Australian is going to be a million dollars richer if they can provide police with information leading to an arrest in the cold case murder of Johan Eric Hulbert from 1959. I hope it's you, Sean. Mm. Thank you very much, Albert. <laughs> well, coming up later in the program, having raised the bar on ministerial conduct, are government ministers now just walking under it? Plus, <laughs> three players ruled out of the finals after freak accidents at training. One was hit by lightning, one had a bird strike, and one had foreign object damage. <laughs> Well, Australia has a new king, but what's he like? Well, back almost 30 years ago, a young Aussie chanced a kiss on a beach, and we have her in the audience tonight. Is, uh, is there a Cecily in the audience? Is Cecily here? I am, Sean, but I should point out that it wasn't actually me that kissed him. A group of us girls had gone down to the beach that day. Oh, and it was, it was one of your friends. One of my friends' friends, yes. I didn't know her. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but you, you, you were there on the day and you saw that famous kiss. No, I was across the road getting ice creams for everyone. <laughs> I remember it because Jane got the golden gay time and Susan had 
The Pablo Bill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, when you, but when you got back, I bet, you, I bet you and your friends could talk of nothing else. Yeah, oh, they were very nice ice creams. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the kiss? Never came up in conversation. <laughs> well, so, so how did you find out about it? Uh, your producer knows my daughter and gave me a ring this afternoon. All right, so, so she found out you were there on the day. Well, around that day, yes. <laughs> Around that day, and they worked out that uh, because you knew the friends of the young woman who kissed the prince, uh, that you would have a story to tell. Well, they talked to me for several hours until I was so tired I was prepared to agree to anything. <laughs> but they wouldn't get out of the house until I signed a piece of paper and agreed to come here. <laughs> so, so what's he like? Who? <laughs> Charles has... Well, I only know him from the magazines and the telly. Yeah, yeah, all right, but you must have some opinion of him. Not really. But I tell you what, though, I do not like the sound of that Prince Andrew. Well, no. thank you very much for sharing your story with it. Incidentally, what was that, what was that uh, piece of paper you signed? It wasn't for any money, was it? It was a contract to appear as a royal expert on the ABC News Channel for the next two weeks. <laughs> so that'll keep me busy. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Cecily. Thank you, Sean. The nuns of Nanata's house are in for a surprise when they are all suddenly murdered and Vera is assigned to investigate. Oh, this year is done, Hope. Thank fuck you've arrived. Dr Towner and I arrived early this morning to half-inch some propofol from the dispensary in order to aid our bout of rambunctious lovemaking we had planned for this afternoon when we came across this. Oh, don't tell me anything, though. We've got an hour to kill and I like to find out things in my own insufferably slow and infuriatingly way. Kenny, love. Yes, ma'am. Put those bloody things away. We won't be needing them. I'll just keep repeating what we've seen over and over till you want to reach through the TV screen and strangle me. Very good, ma'am. Oh. But Vera gets more than she bargained for when she receives a fatal head Mom. injury. Mum, speak to me. I'll make her a nice hot cup of tea. Kenny. Kenny. I've been shot in the head. I know. I'm dead now. <laughs> so it's up to Father Brown on a tombstone rubbing tour of church graveyards to save the day. Ah, thank you, Mrs. Turner. Anything incriminating, Father Brown? Nothing that can't be covered up by shifting me from parish to parish for the next 40 years, Kenny. <laughs> Could you put proper fault in this team, Mrs. Turner? Well, we were out of sugar. Oh, here we go. Not rid of one overacting senior detective arsehole half an hour and a bloody another one turns up to take her place. It's all right, Detective Mallory. He's just in a coma. <sighs> I'll get Hetty Wayne right on the telephone immediately. That's Father Brown. Saturdays at 7.30. And because Free to Air is basically dead, let's face it, I view. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, a lot's been happening in international news this week, though you wouldn't know it from watching the ABC. <laughs> With an update, here's Chicka Lydia Rollins. Thanks, Sean. To the moon first, and it's been half a century since man last walked on the moon. Is it any wonder we have a problem with obesity? The already <laughs> twice delayed launch is aimed not only at the lunar surface, but... Aimed at returning humans to the lunar surface. Returning them. We let the Billowilla family stay here. Why can't we let the people from the moon stay as well? And why has the launch been delayed yet again, this time until October? Can't those idiots at NASA launch their spaceships on schedule? I mean, it's not rocket science. <laughs> to the so-called United States now, where the average life expectancy for men has dropped to 73, meaning President Joe Biden can expect to have died six years ago, and probably did, while bitter rival Donald Trump can expect to have died three years ago, creating the tantalizing prospect in 2024 of the first ever US presidential race between two zombies, apart from the 1980 race between Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. And finally, to Saudi Arabia and Aussie golfer Cam Smith's controversial decision to join the Live Tournament. Controversial? Hey, for $140 million, I'd tee off from Satan's own ball bag. And to those who think Cam should think twice given Saudi Arabia's role in the civil war in Yemen, remember that even the UNHCR puts golfers ahead of the victims of war. Check out their title of their 2019 report, Putting People First. <laughs> Two policemen cycling into a tree. <laughs> Sean, 
Thank you, Chica Lydia. Well, a long-time plan by the government to fix a problem with our economy now is lifting our immigration cap to 195,000 and committing $36 million to fix the visa backlog. But, Wendell Vestibule, you have a solution that's cheaper <laughs> and faster. Well, that's right, Sean. Why don't we put the skilled migrants we've got coming in to work clearing the visa backlog? Because there's like a million unprocessed visas that are stopping them getting into the country in the first place. All right, so how do we get them here to help themselves get here in order to help themselves get here. <laughs> well, fortunately, the previous government thought of that, Sean. Oh, yeah. Those million missing workers stuck in other countries waiting for their visas have already been doing an important job making our visa system appear so dysfunctional that privatising it would be justified. All right. So, <laughs> so we simply send the jobs offshore to the very developing countries those people are trying to leave? Whereupon they wouldn't want to anymore. Yeah. Thus, reducing their own workload and <laughs> increasing the profit margin of whatever donors were awarded the job. Mm. <laughs> Although then they wouldn't come here to solve our skill shortage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to have completely wasted your time. <laughs> That's all right, we weren't doing anything else. <laughs> Another waste of not only time, but money, Vice Rear Cabin Boy Sabobo Gargle is the Australian War Memorial expansion. Initially estimated at $500 million, it's already increased by $50 million due to what's happening in Ukraine. Yeah, Sean. Well, if people would just stop fighting wars, it'd be a damn sight cheaper to honour people who fight wars. <laughs> and do you support the controversial demolition of the award-winning Anzac Hall to make way for a new Anzac Hall that's 4,000 square metres bigger? Oh, yes, Sean. We're in it for the long haul. <laughs> ask you about something that may well be very sensitive at the moment. Oh, I appreciate your concern, Sean, but I assure you that taking it out on the poop deck and exposing it to the sea air has done it the world of good. <laughs> I was thinking more of the current strategic review of the ADF. Of course. Given our limited defence capabilities, should China launch a campaign of aggression against us, how sensible was it to waste what little firepower we have with last Friday's 96 cannon salute? <laughs> Not to worry, Sean, as was announced last week. Australia is considering acquiring hypersonic missiles capable of travelling between Melbourne and Sydney in just seven minutes. It sends a pretty clear message, I think. Sydney, hands off the Australian Open and the Grand Prix. <laughs> Bobo Gargle, another heritage character from uh, Manus Hell's Golden Age. Uh, yeah. In his last appearance, ladies and gentlemen, last uh, appearance. Sean, if this is my, my final appearance, yes. surely uh, you will allow me uh, to... No, uh, no, no, I, I don't think the audience wants to see oh, it. Oh, I think they do, don't they? Yeah. Yes, the audience wants to see it. Well, um... Well, all right, all right. You can do it. Yes, good. But uh, he can't wear the costume because we sold it on Gumtree. <laughs> Uh, for the last time yes. in the history of television, yes. release everybody! <laughs> Conventional medicine may be able to cure the common cold and bring back the dead, but perhaps natural therapies might provide some of the answers to questions you haven't even asked. And now... My significant other, Sandal, has a high fever, a hacking cough and tested positive for coronavirus. According to qualified health professionals and the police, she shouldn't leave the house that we are squatting in and, in fact, should be in hospital. But Sandal was bitten by a healer monster while she was in Mexico on an ayahuasca sculling trip last year and is now afraid of masks. <laughs> she also can't ride in an ambulance because she believes she's 400 feet tall. So, how do I get her out of isolation and into professional health care safely, even if I want it? The answer is by capturing her aura in an amulet, lashing it to a weasel and posting it. While I wait for the results, I've decided to visit my Balneo Herbalist Faith Healer, as the parasitic twin on my back has been bothering me. <gasps> because my care provider is not a licensed medical practitioner, the strongest thing she can prescribe is strawberry yoghurt. Twelve dollars! Senor! Hang on. October 4th, 1998? 
I think this yogurt is off. Oh, yogurt is off. As should be those trousers. If you wouldn't mind disrobing behind that perspex sneeze wall while I get the camera equipment ready. After a few hours of standing on my head while lip syncing to Tom Jones' sex bomb, the footage is ready for upload onto TikTok. Then it's a barium meal, a tarot reading, some Bowen therapy, then back home where I regain consciousness and Sandal is there with a piping cold glass of ethical kombucha and news that my whole afternoon has been nothing but a drug-induced dream she just had. Welcome back, but right now here's Zeppa Craigmule with another sop to regional Australia. Here in the dozy bucolic hinterland of one of Australia's most laid backwater, life is simple and so are its people. McTeagles have been here for generations. Came over here, got the land given to us for free from the government, cleared it, <laughs> had all the topsoil blown away in the drought, poisoned the wildlife and shot the birds. If it wasn't for them sheds over yonder that we ran out to the bikey gangs to make meth, me and the wife would be in dire straits. I do the vocals and she play lead guitar. But Harry doesn't mind. Folks help each other out round these parts, and that's just the way Grunt and his wife like it. He's got a daytime job. Pube Amsterdam raises dust on the neighbouring property and has done since he can remember. As he was hit on the head with a shovel yesterday, this may not be that long ago. <laughs> the two neighbours rely on each other to survive the hard conditions out here with one supplying the other with things he has too much of in return for things he can't make. <laughs> Lately, though, there has been tension. Pube's zombie son recently ran amok on his property and drove his tractor through Grunt's fence. I rebuilt the fence. That should be enough. He rebuilt it to give yourself more land. Don't you look at this thing. No, that's where it's always been. Bullshit. The disputed border has also led to tensions which have not been eased by Pube deciding to cancel his order of things he doesn't have from Grunt and just as easily getting them from somewhere else. He's also started oppressing the crops growing on his property. In response, Grunt has extended an invitation to any of Pube's crops to come and temporarily grow on his farm, providing they are of sufficient quality. In an effort to de-escalate the situation, though, Grant has invoked a regional defence strategy to protect his sovereignty and deter future conflicts. Hopefully, it will improve relations going forward. Zipper Craig Muir, mad as hell. <laughs> well, not coming up because summer love is on in a minute. Well preened predator shows off Falcon. And Spider on tennis court dealt with by Nick Kyrgios. And finally, as a mark of respect, there will be a national public holiday in honour of Queen Elizabeth next Thursday. And in Victoria on the day after, also as a mark of respect, there will be a public holiday in honour of the AFL Grand Final. <laughs> Now, some sections of the business community are unhappy about the holiday being declared at such short notice, but as Defence Minister Richard Miles pointed out... The public holiday is appropriate. Um, th this is a once-in-a-lifetime moment. <laughs> it is very hard to argue with that. <laughs> Jack, baby. Mm.